Half of them see us. Hold on. Yeah, the cat FOMC here. Uh, I want to see now. Hold on. Let me filter it out. What was it again? It's going to be inflation. No, it's not going to be inflation. Unemployment. Nope. Central bank. Ah, uh, July 26th. Oh, damn. Okay, so in like 20 days. Alright. Yeah, it's very key because... Alright, so you have, you have NFP on Friday. Then you have about three weeks until FOMC. Alright. Um... Go back to this, like all. All right, let's go ahead and check the charts real quick. Chat, um, has this been sent? And it's probably huge. Yeah. All right. So, um, let's take a look at price here real quick. So it looks like, um, gold here is starting to flip bearish on the weekly, or I think at one point it did flip bearish in a weekly, right? However, it never, um, sorry. It never, um, Well, sorry. Yeah, so yesterday we flipped bearish um, after breaking the highs. Um, obviously, we flipped bullish today. Again, it really comes down to how we close this week. It's going to be very key. Tomorrow could do anything. Tomorrow could literally just come up, create a new high, and still continue to flip bearish even, right, for NFP. Um, it's a huge day tomorrow. So, but as long as the weekly, again, closes below these ranges here, right? As long as we can close and hold the support and um by by tomorrow's ny close at 5 p.m tomorrow as long as we can respect 24 the next week should have a pretty aggressive weeks pretty aggressive weeks to, to continue pushing down because you'll be respecting that zone there right and then this is your next week's candle if anything unless we create a topic tomorrow the next week will just continue to drive down like let's say tomorrow you close bullish below the range like this you know on price but it comes up and creates a top wick then next week we'll likely just do something like this right and that'll be a mirror to push these uh towards the bottom of the range here right but you, again like before coming down um i believe you're gonna see a top wake tapping into these areas first because if you look left that's where price tapped into last time before driving down right so you gotta keep that um in mind here um the daily today is pretty bearish um obviously looking at the daily we closed bearish back into the range um you can argue and say there's no bottom wick. I'm pretty sure on the daily there's no bottom wick too, right? Yeah, it's like no bottom wick here. Um, so daily has no bottom wick, which is interesting. That doesn't mean it can't continue to pop down. It can definitely still continue to pop down. Um, probably shows that it's just a lower, um, a lower probability to do so because when there's no wick, there's no range, right? No wick just means no range. Um, when you have no range, you obviously less likely to have continuation. Um, so this is a possibility today. You, you could get buys, right? You're in a situation today where you could get buys and could get sells. Again, you do have unemployment claims at 8:30, so price can just continue to pop up until unemployment claims and unemployment claims comes out and just spikes price back down in gold. Um, I think they are expecting um, actual less growth for currency, so they're expecting bad numbers today. So if they're expecting bad numbers, then you should continue to see a pop here. Um, I mean, the four candle is pretty bullish right now. One thing I could say about the four candle is that you you have about an hour and a half, and that's a lot of time considering you have news here. Any given point during this four hour candle, in the next you know hour and an hour and twenty nine minutes, you could pro you can still see it flip bearish. I'm not saying it is, but any given point it could still do that because it's still below these ranges. Not once have perfect, you know, then 9 a.m. you you have a much stronger direction for price. 
But until then, any given point, news can just spike price back down, right? And if it does that, then you're going to see something like this form. Which we'll be ready for, right? We'll be ready for both sides today, buys or sells. But this could still happen, right? Because you're still respecting this resistance. This count never closed above, um, right? These three counts never closed above. They're still below the support. And since they're still below the support, you have range coming down towards the next support, which is 8, 1912, right? So it's gonna be interesting today. Um, that's a possibility. Um, but as of right now, yes, we're bullish. So buys for me would be pretty straightforward if you were to break above. I want to say above here, but I want to see some type of range form first. So I like if it were to close above in the next 10 minutes, I'm not taking buys here. Um, I want to see some type of retracement. So what I need for retracement is I'll understand that this is my current support down here, right? Like around these areas to the left there. So if this is my current support here on price, right? Let's just put it up here actually. Yeah, that makes a lot more, that, that makes a lot more sense. Um so if that's my support on price at 1922, right? And my resistance is at 26. Any given point, price can just do something like this. Close above, and since it has no liquidity, right? Because if, if you were to grab liquidity, you're gonna see it come down towards these levels likely, right? If it were to grab liquidity, um, it'll come down towards 22 before popping up or, or before finding more direction. Um, but if price doesn't create a bottom wick, what you might see is you might see price continue to pop up like this, right? And then all of a sudden, break back into the range like this. So as it breaks back into the range, you can maybe get the zucchini coming down to fill this range for sales, right? There's a possibility as well, but you, you must see it break the highs first before seeing this because you need a range on fake out on a small, on a small time from with, with the zucchini, right? You need that to form first. So uh, whenever that happens, but yeah, if, if you were to break above without, you know, happened 1922 there's no bias for me um, i'm just gonna wait for price to form that support because that support also will confirm if this four hour candle will flip bearish or will if this four hour candle will continue to pop up because again the four hour candle like i said earlier any given point since it's still below that resistance could still flip bearish so if you were to come down retest 1922 right and you just come back up to pop to pop back up above 26 and that'll confirm that you have found support to continue popping up because then it will look something like this, right? This is how price would look, right? If it comes down, tap support and find support, this is your support found. And then boom, that's an indication that you're going to come up now to retest the highs. So what you could do here is you can just wait for a closure above 1926 again, and then take the buys going up, right? But it's very key that you find that support first, just like your retest basically. Just to confirm that you're not going to flip bearish again on the four hour candle because the four hour can or it found something like this right this is how price would look right if it comes down tap support and find support this is your support found and then boom that's an indication that you're going to come up now to retest the highs so what you could do here is you can just wait for a closure above 1926 again and then take the buys going up right but it's very key that you find that support first, just like your retest, basically, just to confirm that you're not going to flip bearish again on the four hour candle. Because the four hour candle is your is your trickiest time from today, right? Understand the four hour because the daily is bearish, the four hour is bullish, and but with the way things are looking and the eight thirty coming up in about an hour, you don't want to get you know caught um, in the mess at eight thirty. Or it can go both ways, right? You can just not get caught in a mess as well but um you guys know what i mean right but yeah that's why i got going on today for gold um buys above 26 closure only if you all right By the way, who caught the analysis yesterday for the simulation? So remember how yesterday chat I said how um 
like we're 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 here on price i literally we literally drew it out um it just happened right at six i, I wasn't on for the session but like i said how before coming up for a tracement you're gonna see it come down and spike down again right and that was it yeah i literally drew out this move bearish coming down breaking below support i said how avoid those cells there um that's what stage one price action traders would would usually take right we're well above there now right so you want to take the buys going back up to retrace the highs so these buys right here for the zucchini and it, ne it never printed the zucchini to be honest but the structure was still formed for that and then obviously i think the rest of the session you can just continue to pop especially last night um london or last no london was a mess to be honest it, just, it, it was in the range it was a it was in a four pit range yeah Pretty neat, pretty neat. Pretty good, uh, good month so far, chat. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Accounts on all time high again after a month, right? We hit an all time high last June 2nd, and then things went downhill from there. But guess what? We remain calm, and, you know, stay true to our plan. They didn't, they didn't let the numbers distract us, and then a month later. 30 days later, we finally got that account back up. So it didn't take me a day. You know, there was no time limit for when I was going to come back up to retest the highs again. But I knew eventually it was going to happen again as long as I was um, staying true to my plan. And then a month later, that's what happened, right? And this coffee is sweet, bro.